Hey there, Pathfinders, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be for players and GMs alike. Have you ever wanted to give your character's token that extra pizzazz? Maybe some jazz hands or an action pose with the sword sticking out of the frame? Or you got that final boss monster that you want to give that extra fear factor to? Well, today I'm going to show you not one, but two methods, both free, on how to create those amazing tokens, the ones that pop out of the frame. And guess what? It doesn't matter which virtual tabletop you play on, they're easily transferable. I play on Foundry, and that's what I'll be showing you today, but they'll be able to be copied over to any virtual tabletop. The first method I'm gonna show you is in GIMP, and this is my preferred method, but I didn't start out using GIMP. I started out using another tool, and I'll cover that one next. In GIMP, I like to start with my token frame. This is the Foundry slash Pathfinder token frame that you can download off of foundryvtt.com. They have three different sizes. I choose and like to use the one that's 512 by 512. Make sure your token is square, preferably. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier. So we'll notice the token has a drop shadow. I'm no Photoshop expert by any means. I just know this drop shadow gets in the way of some of the things that I have learned to do. So I'm sorry y'all, but uh, I'm gonna kind of use my magic wand here and I'm deleting it. Next, I come up here and I create a new layer and you want your overall working layer, your working canvas to be twice the size of your token. So since we're using 512, our token needs to, or our new layer needs to be 1024. And I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, we want to right click add alpha channel and then delete this white background. All right, we want to drag our token over and drop it onto the new frame. Not sure why it's not working. Maybe it's something to do with the way I'm recording or have some things selected. Let's see, nope. So when in doubt, we'll use another method. Just come down here, control, control copy this layer, come to this screen, control V. It's gonna say, hey, what do you want to do? And I'm not sure the different options. I just hit this one to create a new layer. So great. The reason why I like to do this is because when we have a ring as a layer, it'll give us this 512 box whenever we need to see it. Now we have our canvas that's 1024. Now we need our character's art. I'm gonna show you my custom character's art that I had commissioned. This is Varric. He's high scaled or high resolution. So we're gonna have to do some work on him. Um, I'm showing you on 512, but when I made Varric's token, I actually made it a lot bigger and did some other things. But we're going to show you basic sizes. So, again, it's not going to allow me to drag and drop like I normally do. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to paste. It's going to take a second. See how big he is. We're going to hit save. And then now I need to come back to the Varric layer. And up here, scale tool. Click on Varric. He's massive. Highly detailed. I mean, look at that armor. It's beautiful. Beautiful. But for today's demonstration, we are going to scale him way down. And come here. Now, for the moment, I like to put the ring. Oops, turn the ring on. These eyeballs turn on and off. I like to put the ring above so I can see how am I going to position him. For today's demonstration, I think I'm gonna come up here, make sure I'm on the move. So right click, move. I'm gonna position him in a way that his hand is sticking out. Yeah, that's. I think that's what we want. Okay, great. Are we done? No, we gotta do some more work with this token yet. So the next thing is we got to create the mass for the token itself. So I come to the token, use the magic wand, and you can always turn off the art if it helps you. And I'm gonna highlight on the inside. This is why I don't like the drop shadow. Alrighty. So if you wanted to create a token that wasn't popped out of the frame, this is where I like to use anything within this 512 box will fit into that one square grid on your VTT. So if you didn't want a pop out token, you wanted to just do a kind of a regular token, that is okay. So we'll click on Varric's layer, we'll move down, and we're just gonna add a mask. So we already have our token highlighted. We're gonna right click, add layer mask, add 
There you go. You're done. Now you can export that. But this isn't what we want to do for today's demonstration. So we're going to move Barrick back up right about there. Now we're going to do add layer mask based on selection. Okay, great. Control shift A unselects everything. So now we have Barrick. This is a white black mask. So I always get the colors mixed up, but white adds mask and black takes away or, or vice versa. It takes a little trial and error for me. I'm gonna come up here and make sure I have black selected with my paintbrush. I'm still on the mask. See how I can click left and right? I'm on the mask. Okay, it uses the bottom color. So white, white adds to the mask. So we're gonna hit Control Z. I'm gonna flip back to black. Black takes away the mask. So that's what we want. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? We're done, right? Pop out token? No. Okay, so we made sure the ring was down below. Having a little bit technical difficulties here, but you want the character art on top of the ring. So there's two ways to kind of work with this. You can meticulously use the mask tool, change your size of your brush here and, and go along and, and start. Whoops, I'm painting now. I'm not on the mask layer. Come back to the mask layer and meticulously go around, right? And get right next to his hair. Oh no, I accidentally got the wrong too much there. Okay, ah, sometimes you have to do it this way and that is okay, depending on the detail. Other times you could do a couple different selections. Um, you can, the first one to try is make sure we're on the characters layer is the wand tool. So see how I just clicked in there and it selected everything. If I hit delete, it takes it away. Okay, so that's one method. Another method, again, it just really depends on the art, is to come up here to come up here to colors and color to alpha. It defaults to white and you adjust these two sliders. See, there's there's some white in Rick up here. You adjust these two sliders to get something kind of like what you were thinking. Not too bad. They both produce similar results. Okay. Another way to do it is to run it through one of those AI background background removers, but that um, that can reduce the resolution. So I only use that as a last resort and depends how long the token's hanging around. I think on this one, I'm going to use the magic wand. I'm going to delete the white. And I'm going to hit control shift A to unselect everything. I like that. You're pretty much done. You can run with this. This transparency will just show whatever the map is. But I have this background layer. I want to add a mask again. Or you can do two things. You don't even need a mask with this because we created a separate layer for this. What's the background color do we want to use? Well, as you saw, I was kind of messing around with this already. I am going to come here to paint. I'm going to come here to white, click the eyedropper, and I want kind of some of the gold ring and hit okay. And I always like big brushes just to make things a little easier on me. I just can paint the inside of this token ring. You can see how the fuzzy tool, the wand tool didn't get everything, but you know, it's demonstration purposes. You can go in and get finer detail if you really, really wanted to, but I'm just showing you the basics and you can figure out how to get better and, and fine tune the craft. That's all there is to it, to creating a token in GIMP, this pop-out token. So we hit File, Export As. We are going to export as a ping, PNG. So name it whatever you like, and then a PNG, and then save. Again, I don't know what half this stuff means here. Just click Export. We're done with GIMP now. Now we can go to Foundry. So this is the VTT that I use. Boundary, a nice little Pathfinder Lodge map. We're just gonna come down here to the bottom, zoom in. I already have two characters created. Barrick, Gimp. Open up Barrick. We're gonna go to our prototype token. We're gonna change his appearance to the token that we just created. Select. I think that, oh, update token. Drag Barrick out. Oh no, 
Barrick's really small. What happened? Why is he really small? It's because we overscaled it. If you would have stayed in that 512 by 512 box I showed you, you wouldn't have to overscale it. But since we went outside of that, we're just going to scale it up a little bit. No big deal. So we come here, delete the token, go back into the settings. Here, come to scale and change it to two times. That's why your canvas is twice the size as your ring. So if it's 512, we do 1024. So we know easily how to scale it up. Update token, come down. It looks gigantic, but it's not. And there we are, our pop out token with Varric. Sticking out just enough, gives it that extra little bit of flavor. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. The next method I'm going to show you is actually a Foundry VTT module called Tokenizer. And this is what I've used for years. Longer than I'm playing Pathfinder, I've used Tokenizer. You can, yes, yes you can, you can create pop-out tokens in Tokenizer. In fact, they've even gotten uh, added some new tools to make it even easier. So with Tokenizer, activate it. You open up, click on the avatar and it's going to open up the common tokenizer menu. I've changed some settings so I don't automatically add the background, the color background and automatically add the ring. I don't like those for my workflow. So the first thing I want to do is again, I want to grab my frame. So I have a custom frame that I want to use the same one. Here we are. We're going to delete the mystery man. Okay, so do the to do over scaling tokens on tokenizer, you want to change your token ring to 50%. Now we want to add our art. Varric node background. This is a very big piece of art here. I'm going to put the token on top. It already comes with a mask. Look at that. I want to make sure that um it's the exact position and pose I want. Oh, unlock. Drag it over just a little bit. Again, this is a really big picture. Foundry doesn't like this picture as big. Uh, you can zoom in a little bit if you like. Yeah, let's do that. Let's move the token ring on top. Barrack over and up. Get his eyes right there. Okay, great. Again, most of you have used tokenizer and know how easy it is to do this, whether the token is at 50% or 100%, you, get, you can get this far. But how do you do the pop-outs? Well, I started by telling you make your token 50%. Now they have these cool wand tools. How do we get this background gone? Well, with the wand tools, we can easily come here, click, it's gonna highlight everything and we're gonna click transparent. It's not perfect. Again, you can go through here and manually do it yourself, but I'm just showing you quickly how you can do it. So now we got Varric there. We actually want Varric on top. We're gonna to click this button for mask and we're gonna add mask number one and we want it, this to pop out, right? That's what we want. Hit apply. Well, it didn't work. I'm going to take mass one off and put mass zero on. There we go. Okay. I like to always have two layers because it gets real tight to try to do the mask down here at the bottom, like just to get it just right. This is instead of using the fuzzy wand tool that you can mainly go through and erase what you want to pop out and not pop out. Just kind of like you could in GIMP. I had to do that sometimes. It's okay but the wand tool is pretty good. See how it's like, ah, oh, did I get it right? So what I like to do is you hit right click to, <clears throat> to cover the mask back up. It's just do a little, a little kind of like head and shoulders. Um, and then I duplicate the layer. Hit this button, again, it's a big, it's a big file, so it doesn't like it. A mass one for for this one here. See the letters one, two, zero. So now we got the token ring. We got the pop out. Make sure you click mask one. Which mask do we want to use? 
two. There is no master two. I'm gonna use one. That combines all three layers here. Okay, are we done? No, we wanna add that background layer again. So we click the paint bucket. We just move it down, move, move, move it down. How do we get it? Uh, the color, use the eyedropper and see what I like about this program is to hover over, yeah. Okay, now with tokenizer, I couldn't remove that drop shadow off the ring, but that's okay. Come down here and hit apply. Now, some of the complaints of tokenizer are that it reduces the resolution and it, it absolutely does. But if you don't know how to use GIMP yet, tokenizer is completely valid. I've made hundreds of tokens using tokenizer and you can't really tell the difference. So let's bring Varric tokenizer out. Oh, shoot. What did I do? Forgot to scale them up, right? Okay, so come back here to the appearance, click on scale, bring them up to two, update token. Nice, there he is. And if you're zoomed out to like this far, you can't really tell. Let's bring down the GIMP one, right? Obviously the zoom's a little different just because of the programs and how I scaled Varric down. But, I mean, I think it looks pretty good. When you zoom all the way in, then you can start to see some of the details on the face, the fingers. Like I said, we went real quick with the fuzzy tool. What I probably would have done is gone back and manually done around the hand because it's sticking out. It wouldn't have been that much to do the hand and around the head. But you can see how this one doesn't have the white line around it that this one does. Just because of the different tools and how the, the fuzzy one or how the editing one. I could have gotten closer and, and I have. Uh, but for this demonstration, I just want to show you that, hey, you can make pop out tokens. Both of them are real easy to use. I can make this same token in less than 60 seconds in either program. As you get the hang of it, you're just going to get better and better and better. Now, not, does every token need to pop out and be overscaled? No, not at all. But for a player character token or for a big boss battle token, yeah, why not? If you found this video helpful and valuable, please hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and let me know in the comments which way are you gonna make your next pop out token. Thanks and have a great day, and I'll see you on the open road.